You know, during R squared coaching, we solve problems. And one of my favorite questions just last week was, what do I do with this offer? The seller finally has an offer. It's lower than what they want. And if I do what I usually do, no one's going to take this offer and the buyer's going to go away and I'm going to end, end up with this listing back in my inventory, not moving. How can I ensure that this offer, even though it's low, how can I ensure that my seller takes it? And some of the answers were so brilliant, like don't apologize for the buyer, explain that this is what's going on in the market right now, um, encourage the seller that, hey, we finally have a buyer that's interested. And of course the coach always goes last and I'm Floyd Wickman trained, so my answer was a Floyd Wickman dialogue. And when I finished it, my students said, oh my gosh, I wish I had recorded that. So I thought, well, I could probably just do a video. So here's what I said. I think you need to hit them with the highlights, the way that Floyd taught us. And of course, that means that after you build rapport and small talk smart a little bit, you, you say to the seller with a visual tool, I wanna just kinda, give you an overview here, kind of hit you with the highlights, what's involved in this offer. And the first thing, of course, is the money. And then you take your talking pad and write down the net. And you point to that net, let's say they're walking away with $200,000, and you say, if we can find a way to hold on to this buyer, it looks like you'd be walking away with somewhere in the neighborhood of $200,000. And then you pause because some sellers are gonna to need to react. Some sellers are gonna to need to say, what, are you kidding? We need more than that, I told you, if we can't get... And of course you allow that and you smile and you nod and you say, okay, well, it's up to you. That's, that's, that's why we call it an offer. <laughs> but it lets, as Floyd would say, it lets the air out of the balloon, right? It takes the pressure off. So when they're done reacting or not, you've given them that space, then you write down the next thing, which is the date. And you can either do date of closing or date of possession. So you write down the date and you hold it up and you say these words. And the buyer is proposing that we go ahead and have a closing at the end of February. It's February 27th is what they proposed. What? February 27th? We need to move sooner than that. Let that come out if in fact it needs to. But you pause to allow that. Maybe they say nothing. And then the last thing you show them is a question mark. You write it right on your talking pad and you say, and of course, the real important thing about this offer isn't so much the money or the time because we could find a buyer that would give you $400,000 cash in your pocket and close tomorrow afternoon if that's what you wanted. But if they never performed, it wouldn't do us a bit of good. And that's why I've written this question mark. You see, before you and I got together to look at this offer today, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I did all kinds of investigative work. I talked to the agent that's been working with these buyers. I talked to the lender, or I read the letter from the lender that's been working with these buyers, and I really tried to investigate, is this buyer solid? Because really, of these three things, that's the most important ingredient. And based on what I know now, and now you dramatically draw an X on that talking pad, crossing out that question mark. And you say, based on what I know now, if we can find a way to work it out so that you sell to them and they buy from you, I think these people really will go through with it. That is hit them with the highlights. Thank you, Floyd Wickman. We should probably all do that when we're presenting offers, don't you think? It would probably increase our odds of getting paid more often and serving our clients on a higher level.